Hi, and welcome to another episode of Rue News. I'm Abby Higginbotham. And I'm Darius Stewart. We're here to bring you the news from around campus and Kansas City every Tuesday. We start today's show by taking a look at some recent water issues in a couple buildings around campus. We go to Henry Gamber with more. I'm Henry Gamber with Rue News. Today, I'm at the Atterbury Student Success Center, where I spoke with Associate Director for International Student Affairs, Mary Parsons, about the water damage in the building and what it's been like for them to relocate their office. I also spoke with Oak Hall RHC President Kayla Jones and Oak Hall resident Bailey Ginger about the water damage at Oak Hall. So in International Student Affairs, we're in the basement and the water came in through the ceiling. It started over our advising desks and we had had some issues with water in the past on the floor so we thought it would be isolated to that and then it started sprouting up throughout the ceiling in different places at the front desk and throughout the office. We've had some challenges in terms of keeping documents private because we have a lot in terms of homeland security and obviously just general student data. A pipe broke and it flooded not only that room, but it also flooded the room under and apparently the third floor too. So all the rooms under each other. I was glad to see that the day after they already started construction though. So they like made it a priority to go ahead and get that fixed and they are still working on it. So still working to get it finished because I mean, it's three floors, so it's probably gonna take a minute, but at least they're, you know, working on it every day. I think we got an email and they were like, so we're going to have you move rooms, which, you know, wasn't actually a bad thing because we had had, uh, we weren't able to get our AC fixed before that. So we were like, cool, new rooms, we'll work with that. They were really nice about it. They um, were definitely very helpful about like, okay, you can take these totes up. Um, you know, when I, because I wasn't sure how to like check out of our old room and move into the new one or anything. Everybody at the front desk was really helpful with that, explaining what we had to do with the keys and how to get that exchanged. Really went seamlessly. While we don't know when the dorms at Oak Hall will be fixed, we do know that the work on the Atterbury is estimated to be finished this Friday. I'm Henry Gamber, and this is Rue News. Thanks, Henry. Last year, Chancellor Agarwal released a 60-page strategic plan to be implemented over the next 10 years. Among the details include a continuation and expansion of attracting non-traditional students as a part of a growing student body, but also turning the campus into a more residential area with a greater sense of community. We look forward to seeing this plan progress as we continue our studies here. Last Thursday, the Gay and Lesbian Archive of Mid America, or GLAMA for short, launched its latest exhibit titled GLAMA at 10, A Decade of Discovery. Commemorating the work of the archive over the past decade, GLAMA works to preserve the work of the LGBTQ community. The event not only features pieces from the existing collection, but also award-winning student work as well. GLAMA at 10, A Decade of Discovery will be available for viewing at the LaBud Special Collections area in the Miller Nichols Library until the end of March 2020. UMKC Police released its annual Campus Crime and Fire Safety Report. All universities are required to disclose this information as part of a 1990 Clergy Act. In 2018, instances of reported sexual assault saw a small increase. However, according to UMKC Police, this is due to victims becoming more willing to report sexual assaults against them. On the other end, incidents related to alcohol and drug violations have seen a steep decline, the lowest between 2011 and 2018. Though there is no firm research explaining this decrease, UMKC police attribute this decline to increase in drug and alcohol education efforts on campus. Writing is a passion for many people, but few have gone as far as to get a book published. Let's go to student and poet Darian Case discussing his new book, The Sky Has Full Lips. Poetry was always there when I needed it. Like when I had time to relax and yes, yeah, a full time, like a division one athlete, you're a full time, it's a full time job. And you have academics on top of that. So you're trying to progress in uh, your knowledge, but also keep yourself afloat. And poetry became one of those outlets for me that kept me afloat. I realized that poetry was where I felt finally um, seen. You know, like there's a lot of things I couldn't talk to that I had to witness or deal with. I used that poetry as that way to express it. And it's a way to talk to people about it. I did it and I found a community of people that really stuck by me during times where I didn't have anybody else to talk to about how I'm feeling. Like I went through things that people don't usually go through, but I tackled in the poetry. This is how this is how poetry travels. Every time you start one of those things where you're talking to people about poetry, it's like turn to your neighbor and tell me a cousin and all y'all are my people and just really talk to somebody like that, even though they don't know you and approach them. Because there's a time where I need to write about, but it happened and I'm still 
you know, I'm still enjoying that moment. There's open mics all over the city, and there's also all these people to reach out to that know about them. And I mean, some people are nervous to do that. I mean, I get that. I was one of those people, but then I started, and I was like, oh, all these people are just really super cool. Yeah, that fear kind of snapped out. I don't really get afraid anymore performing. I just get uh, anxious, like, ooh, I'm excited. I think there was a time I hit where if it's a piece that I've had for a while, maybe in a few months, it's like, oh, anytime, any place, I can just pull it out myself. Like, it'll always be there. You see a lot of acting in poetry, but you see a lot of uh, that quality of just capturing an audience and really taking them through something that they could, the comparison they would never relate to this specific moment. I kind of just want to minister as well in poetry in, the, in my own way, because um, I can only talk about what I know. And maybe somebody else has something they know that they want to also speak on. Let's go to our sports correspondent, Kennedy Bright, to hear about what's happening with UMKC Athletics. Thanks, guys. This week, Kansas City men's soccer had its first conference win against Incarnate Word 2-1 in double overtime Friday night. It was a scoreless game until the 58th minute when the Cardinals put one on the board first, setting the game at 1-0. In the 78th minute, UMKC freshman Aiden Cavanaugh was fouled in the box, and sophomore Dave Ray Capoy took the penalty kick for the Ruse, setting the game at 1-1. However, after double overtime, junior Ryan Cadu scored a goal assisted by freshman Nate Tim and found the back of the net for the Ruse, giving Kansas City a 2-1 victory. On Sunday, Kansas City men's soccer was back at it again, winning another conference game against UTRGV 2-1. In the first half, Kansas City gave up a PK, giving the Vaqueros their first goal. In the 21st minute, the Ruse struck back with a goal by junior Ryan Cadu. And in the 67th minute, freshman Mikhail McCoy sealed the win for the Ruse 2-1. Next, Ken City hosts Utah Valley October 19th in Durwood Stadium. That's your sports update. I'm Kennedy Bright with Rue News. Back to you, Darius and Abby. Thanks, Kennedy. As always, thank you for tuning into this week's episode of Rue News. I'm Darius Stewart. And I'm Abby Higginbotham. See you next Tuesday.